We're going to be talking about perfectionism today, cravings, body image, self-love, patience for this journey. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a nutritional therapist and disordered eating recovery coach. I help women move from binge eating, emotional eating and overeating to a normal, healthy relationship with food to find their healthy weight, to feel confident and to just start to thrive in life. The first question that I'm starting with today is, could you explain a little bit more about how you deal with your cravings? If I decide not to honor a craving, is it possible that I'm restricting? The reason why this question was asked, it was asked on my video of how I healed my relationship with food. And in there, I was discussing how I don't always honor a craving now. I did throughout a large part of my healing journey, but now I don't. Now I pick and choose whether I want to do that or not. And I think this is such an important question. It was a question that I myself had before I started training in the psychology of eating disorders. Now, obviously I haven't personally assessed you, so I can't say specifically for your situation what the best thing to do is for you right now. However, what I will say is distinguishing between whether it's a, a, a helpful act or one of restriction, of course, comes down to motivation most of the time. Is this an act of self-care or is this an act of punishment? And it's much easier to distinguish between these two when we've got an active, nurtured voice of self-care and self-love inside of us. I understand the temptation is there, particularly at the start of our journey, to try and fool ourselves into thinking that we're acting from a place of self-care in order to almost justify being restrictive, saying, oh, I'm not honoring a craving because I'm doing this as an act of self-care, when really we know deep down that's not why we're doing it. I think this was such a big reason why on my personal journey, just my personal journey, doing what I do with cravings now came at the end once I'd grown a lot of my self-love and self-care so that I could really see and know this was why I was doing it. I think the answer to this question also comes down to one of flexibility and permission. It's one thing to not honour any cravings and it's a different thing to not honour half of them. I will often eat chocolate even when I don't crave it because I'm not restricting it, I'm not depriving myself of it, but sometimes I, it's not the most helpful or healthiest thing for me to honour my craving for chocolate in that particular moment. With clients, we also don't blindly ignore cravings no matter where they are on their journey. They are explored. Cravings seem to pop out of nowhere, right? We just sort of hit with them all of a sudden, but they do come from somewhere. They have many, many different causes. And one thing that I always do with clients is we explore where those cravings are coming from. For instance, if we notice a pattern with clients that they're getting a lot of cravings because they're not fueling themselves adequately, then rather than focusing on the cravings aspect of it, we would focus on making sure that they fuel themselves adequately. If a client is getting a lot of cravings because they're triggered off by stress and that's their stress coping mechanism that they've learned over time. We wouldn't be looking at ignoring those cravings, we'd be looking at changing the coping mechanism for stress or, you know, ideally bringing the stress levels down at the same time. It could be issues with sleep, it could be issues with blood sugar balance, it could be emotional coping. Going into all of the roots of cravings and all of the causes of cravings and everything that I do with clients to minimise cravings and to eliminate a lot of cravings goes far beyond the scope of this video. I don't want to get that now. But if that is you, if that is something that you struggle with and you'd like to chat that through with me, then you're very welcome to book a free call with me below. With clients, there's always this tipping point in their journey that we get to, where their motivations genuinely change from body control and weight loss to one of wanting to nourish their body. And it's so much easier in my experience. You know how hard it is normally to move past a craving. Letting a craving go when our motivation switches, in my experience, is what I see with clients, is my personal experience as well. All of a sudden now letting a craving go becomes a much, much, much easier act. It's not this overwhelming sensation that requires so much willpower. And I find that really, really interesting. The second question that I want to answer, it's not really a question, it's more of a statement, but I'm gonna turn it into a question because I think that it's interesting and relevant for a lot of us. I struggle because I'm a very perfectionist person. If I don't have a clear goal in mind and a set of rules I have to follow, I feel like I've not accomplished anything. I just like to start with that first bit. I spoke about this in my last video, disordered eating and perfectionist traits, there is a correlation there. When we're able to stick to our food rules or diet, 
you know, we all know that that in some ways feels good. We feel good about that. The problem is, is that it comes with all of these other downsides, right? And if it was that simple, then none of us would be here. My question for this is doing this and being this way with food, does it actually make us feel successful in a meaningful way? Does it actually give us that? If we place our minds into a year from now, if we can have the things that we really, really actually want to have, those things that would make us actually feel really accomplished when it comes to the way that we're eating and the way that we're living, what is it that we would actually want? What would that be? Would it be I successfully kept to a diet and I managed to lose X amount of weight? Or is what would make you feel accomplished, really accomplished, having a healthy, balanced relationship with food and either being at or moving towards your natural healthy weight and being accepting of your body and feeling confident in your body? Naturally, I'm not here to tell you that it should be one or the other at this point. I'm empathetic to that over time we can develop this narrative for ourselves that we can only view ourselves as accomplished if we've managed to successfully diet and restrict our food. But that's not an objective truth and I would argue that that is a limiting belief. We can of course feel accomplished and take care of ourselves and find a healthy balanced relationship with food all at the same time. I really strongly believe that. Moving on to the second part of this comment. Today I started great, but I started thinking that this process will be so much slower than dieting. However, this is not true because all of my excess weight is due to binge eating. I was thinking that I should start counting calories again, that I need to lose this weight as fast as possible because I start uni in a month and I feel disgusted with myself. I can barely leave my house. It's so hard, I think a lot of us can resonate with this, it's so hard when we feel this way about ourselves and the answer to us is to change our body as quickly as possible. While this is by no means easy or simple or straightforward, I would always ask the question of, is this an issue with someone's body or is this an issue with someone's perception of their body? I know with the way that society is set up and all the pressure that we have, it feels like the easier option and the right option to do harm to ourselves almost, to change our body as quickly as possible in order to accept ourselves. When really there is another option. The other option is we can change how we view ourselves, which seems can seem like an impossible task. I understand, but it is more than possible. We don't have to feel amazing about our body in particular. We just have to feel comfortable and perhaps neutral about our body enough that we can go through this process of healing and gaining a healthy relationship with food and give ourselves the patience and the time necessary for that. It all comes down to what we ultimately want and we do have to get to that point where we really decide actually no I do want to feel better in my body and I want to improve my body image and I want to have a healthy relationship with food and that's more important to me now than trying to manipulate my body in a very fast and rapid way. I can't tell you that you're at that point yet or that you should be at that point yet. That's entirely your personal journey. What I am saying is we do have more than one option here. How did you not give up in such a long process? Well, firstly, I would like to point out that while it did take me a few years, I was figuring all of this stuff out completely on my own. And there were many points in my journey, which you might know if you watch my healing my relationship with food story, where I thought that I had arrived. So in essence, I almost stopped working on myself because I thought, oh, I'm here now. And those two things combined meant that it took me years to get to where I am today. It really doesn't need to be that long. I have some clients that only stay with me for six weeks before they feel confident and competent. However, to answer the question, how did I not give up? And I've spoken about this many, many times before. It was a shift in motivation. It was deciding that I wanted something different for myself. I wanted something ultimately better for myself. And I worked on all of the things that made being patient difficult, like my insecurities, like telling myself that I wasn't allowed to be happy or confident until I was a certain size. If you wanna hear more about that, I'll point you to the video that I just made on my mindset changes. What are some examples of actions and behaviors that a person that has self-love does versus someone who doesn't love themselves? I think that's such a great question and I like the way that it's phrased as actions. In my experience, self-love is not a light bulb moment that happens from one moment to the next. I don't really love myself and now I've had this breakthrough and now I do. Sometimes it can work like that. But in my experience, self-love is a practice. It is a skill almost. 
something that we can nurture and hone over time through the actions that we take. After we have a desire to gain self-love, then it's all about doing the practices of self-love, even though they feel uncomfortable, and doing them and doing them and doing them, letting that snowball until we start to feel those feelings. Some actions and behaviors then that someone with self-love might do. Saying no, if they're not happy or comfortable with something, being assertive and standing up for themselves and voicing their opinions, expressing their needs, and expecting their needs to be met. We don't always expect our wants to get met, that wouldn't be entirely reasonable, but to expect others to meet our basic needs. Self-love to me is taking care of both our wants and our needs. Some of my clients come and they're overly attentive to their wants and they find it difficult to do what it is that they need. And some clients come and they're very attentive to their needs and often disregard the things that they want that make them feel good. Giving ourselves space to experiment and learn from mistakes and not being harsh on ourselves for that and just understanding that that's a part of growing and it's a part of life and it's a and it's a good thing. Self-love to me is setting healthy boundaries. That was particularly true for me and when I started to do that it really helped me cultivate this sense of self-love and self-esteem that I have today. It's taking time for ourselves and prioritizing ourselves where we can in the busy lives that we lead. To me a huge part of self-love which I believe is relevant to a lot of us is not doing harm to ourselves, to our physical health, to our mental health, in an effort to try and be more acceptable to other people, what we think might be more acceptable to other people, or to gain external validation. If any of that that we've spoken about today is relevant to you and things that you really want to have, cultivating self-love, patience for the healing process, better body image, feeling more comfortable in your body, minimizing and managing cravings, if any of that is relevant to you and you'd like some support and guidance in getting there faster whilst transforming your relationship with food, then book a call with me and we can see if that's a transformation that I can help you with. That's all from me today, lovelies. Please leave more questions down below. I'd like to do some more of these videos. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.